the 16-page long Elden Ring interview by Edge magazine featuring the beautiful genius that is Hidetaka Miyazaki, the creator of Elden Ring and head of From Software, is here. And I am here to tell you about the most important parts of the interview. I bought the magazine in order to be able to read it, so I'm also gonna leave a link in the description so you can buy it yourself if you have the money and are interested. I'm gonna talk about Miyazaki himself, follow up with his collaboration with George R. R. Martin, then go into the development of Elden Ring, and then, last but not least, I'm gonna go over some nitty gritty details about what the Elden Ring actually is, who Godfrey the First Elden Lord is, and news about the eternal city and temple in the sky. So sit back, crack open a can of Estus, and let me tell you everything you need to know about this interview. Starting off with Miyazaki himself, he's currently basically living in his office, locking himself away to dive deep into his own mind and creativity. His anticipation for Elden Ring's release is being held back a bit by some doubts though. He states that, I start thinking, I could have maybe done this better, I could have maybe approached this in a different way. But later on he does go on to say that he thinks Elden Ring might be the best work to date and that they took some extra time for quality assurance and bug fixing this time around. He also talks about why he doesn't play the games he creates. He basically states that he can't get into a playing state because the distance between him and the project is missing, so he will always play as a developer of the game, getting overwhelmed by memories of the development time instead of actually enjoying the game. When talking about his collaboration with George R. R. Martin, creator of Game of Thrones, he goes on to say that even though George is by all means not a gaming pro, his excitement and passion towards the genre was really reassuring. Regarding George's contribution, basically Miyazaki approached him with some really broad ideas. George then built a whole world around it, especially focusing on the backstory and history of this world, and then FromSoft took over again and made it work within a game, adding a lot of the story elements that take part in the presence and adding details, characters and events. Moving further into the development of Elden Ring, Miyazaki states that creating such a huge world was a challenge and an opportunity. An opportunity to add more detail to a world than was possible in games prior to Elden Ring. Generally, the main focus was always to make the game flow well and just make it fun. Of course, developing such a huge world by hand is impossible, so FromSoft naturally enlisted my employees and used techniques that procedurally placed trees and plants for example, and then went over by hand and perfected their placements. All in all, Miyazaki states that Elden Ring is basically the culmination of everything FromSoft have ever worked on, and every lesson they learned from each game led up to this point and more. But now let's get into the nitty gritty, into the lore, starting with what the Elden Ring is. The Elden Ring is not inspired by the One Ring in Lord of the Rings. Whereas the One Ring in Lord of the Rings is a real physical ring, the Elden Ring is in fact not a physical ring, it is something abstract, something that represents something metaphysical. So we are not going to find a literal ring and put it on in the game. That is also the reason why there are no equipable rings in Elden Ring at all. This decision was made so that the Elden Ring as a leitmotif doesn't lose focus. Another interesting detail that I would like to mention is that FromSoft actually created different scriptures and runic characters for the different fractions in the game, which I think is just impressive. Let's continue with the most interesting aspect of the interview. Godfrey the First Elden Lords. Here I will just quote Miyazaki directly. One of the motivations of the player character in Elden Ring is to become Elden Lord. They are to journey to the Lands Between and become the next Elden Lord. In the sort of heyday of the Golden Order of the Lands Between, there were two Elden Lords, and Godfrey was the first of these. He was the very first Elden Lord and was married to Eternal Queen Marika, who has been detailed in some of the lore we've released publicly so far. And he was representative of this period of grandeur and affluence. He represents everything great about the Elden Ring and about the Lands Between at that time. Eventually he was exiled from the Lands Between. He himself became Tarnished, and he shares this deep connection with the Tarnished, the player character. Godfrey is an embodiment of their long history and struggle. He represents a lot of what the player character stands for, and he symbolizes a deep connection with the player. Something that used to shine brilliantly and has now become tarnished and fallen from grace. The fact that he explicitly mentions another Elden Lord is very interesting in my opinion. 
the interviewer goes on to ask about the meaning about the tentacles across the weapon in the cover art, and whether it's connected to the ocean. And while Miyazaki does not deconfirm the possibility of a weird tentacle hentai fetish plot twist, he does kind of dance around this question. What's happened here, I think, is that the interviewer asked the wrong question in a way. The tentacles, in my opinion, do not stand for the ocean necessarily, but rather for eldritch horror a la Bloodborne and Lovecraft, aka something rooted in space. This is further hinted at by this section of the interview. The interviewer says, We've noticed item descriptions tease us with the prospect of an eternal city, underground, as well as a temple in the sky, asking whether Elden Ring will really explore those places, which is a great question in my opinion. This is Miyazaki's answer. Yes, those places referred to in terms of depth and height of the world will be places you can actually explore. We wanted to create this world that was full of the joy of exploration of the unknown, so we wanted to create lots of enticing things for the budding adventurer. And we wanted to prepare lots of these mysterious situations that players would read about or hear about, and want to go looking for and want to go exploring. Variety is something we strive for when creating this game, and something I believe we've managed to achieve. There has been a lot of speculation that Elden Ring will have a space-related twist, something about ancient sorcery, etc. And while the data mine maybe has already proven or disproven that, for me, as someone who didn't look at the data mine, this is especially interesting. The Eternal City underground and the Temple in the Sky will really likely be places where we can go to in Elden Ring, and I myself can't wait for that. This interview was really good. Um, of course, I did not cover everything that was mentioned. There were also small sections dedicated to Vati and Sui the Witch, for example. But overall, I really enjoyed what we got here. And yeah, I hope you liked this video as well. I've made some Elden Ring videos in the past, so please check them out if you are up for some fun boss speculation, for example. And this also marks the end to a Turbulent 2021. And I want to thank all of you for watching my videos this year. It's it's really been nice, and yeah, it's it's just fun to make videos and interact with you. Um, yeah, that said, I got a lot planned and in the works for next year, so stay safe and stay tuned, and I will see you next year. Bye. Panada.